This is an old Sony Vario netbook which I've named Barbie. I've featured it on the channel before, most notably in a video about a disc erasure tool called DBAN. Now this is not my computer, or at least it wasn't. It previously belonged to my auntie and initially I was just going to erase the hard drive and throw the computer away, but I was kind of curious what it would be like to try and use this computer in 2023, because I've tested different operating systems with low amounts of memory before. But booting into an OS in a VM isn't the same as actually using a computer. So could such an old and slow computer actually be usable with the right software? And what can we achieve if we max out the memory and upgrade the drive? Specs wise, this laptop has an Intel Atom N470 processor. This CPU was slow even for its time. In fact, it's even slower than most Pentium 4s. It also came with 1GB of DDR2 RAM, a 250GB hard drive, and terrible integrated graphics. In terms of the software, most netbooks came with either Windows XP or Windows 7 Starter, a heavily stripped down build of Windows 7 that lacked features like Aeroglass and even the ability to change your wallpaper. But of course, both operating systems are now outdated and unsupported. Windows 11 and macOS obviously don't work due to their own hardware constraints. And while Windows 10 could work in theory as it does have a 32-bit version, I opted to use Linux instead because Linux is based. And frankly, I don't have much faith in Windows 10 since Windows 7 and XP don't even run that well. I decided to install Debian as the amount of distros that still support 32-bit processors is quite limited. I also chose not to use a distro that came with a GUI like Antics or Ubuntu as I wanted to use a tiling window manager. So how does this laptop perform in daily tasks? Well, in a nutshell, not very well. Using Cube Browser, web browsing is quite sluggish, especially on bloated websites that are full of ads and JavaScript. It's possible the performance would be better if I optimised the living monkeys out of Gentoo, used OpenRC instead of SystemD, and used something like DWM instead of i3. To give this old netbook a boost, I upgraded it from 1GB of RAM to 2GB, as the CPU doesn't accept any more than that and I bought the cheapest SATA SSD I could find on the used market, which was a 64GB SanDisk drive. It's not a particularly fast SSD, but honestly anything is an upgrade from the abysmal hard drive this laptop came with. These two upgrades were £5 in total since these parts are practically worthless nowadays, though I ended up destroying the keyboard during disassembly. Sad times. Immediately I noticed that the boot time went from over a minute to around 45 seconds, which isn't too shabby as when this computer ran Windows 7 Starter, at times it would take over a minute just to log in. Web browsing has slightly improved, although bloated websites still take a long time to load and you can't have many tabs open at once, but lighter websites run fairly well. Now there's quite a lot you can do with this machine, though a lot of the programs I'm going to be talking about are command line programs. So first I installed Newsboat, which is a terminal RSS reader and this works well not just for reading random people's blogs, but you can also get a feed from news sources like the BBC and New York Times. You can also subscribe to YouTube channels and subreddits using RSS. Next I installed Lynx, which is a terminal based web browser. It's obviously nowhere near as practical as a normal web browser, but it does work well for things like reading Wikipedia articles. For other forms of web browsing, you can just use Cute Browser if you don't mind exercising a bit of patience. Yeah, it's quite ironic that a device called a netbook isn't that good at browsing the net. For creating documents, LibreOffice works surprisingly well. Though of course, if you want something lighter, you can use a plain text editor like Vim, Leafpad or Genie. You could also install TextLive to create LaTeX documents. For communication, I saw Profanity for talking on XMPP. There's also WeChat for IRC, GoMux for Matrix, and even Discord has some terminal clients, though unfortunately they're unofficial and against TOS. I also installed Mutt, which works well for reading, sending, and receiving email on the command line. Alternatively, you can use a GUI program called Geary. It's not as light as Mutt because it's a GUI program, but it runs very well and certainly better than Thunderbird. Though do note that third-party mail clients don't work with email providers that don't use IMAP, for example ProtonMail and Tutanota. For consuming content, MPV works very well for watching videos and playing music stored locally or from a network file share. Now since YouTube is a very bloated website, 
watching YouTube on this computer isn't exactly a smooth experience. Although it is possible and somewhat usable if you use Invidious rather than the official YouTube website. One thing I did notice was that even though all these programs are fairly lightweight, they still took a few seconds to load despite having an SSD and enough RAM to spare. And I'm guessing this is simply because the CPU is incredibly underpowered. It has just one core and a very low clock speed. With such weak specs, surely this laptop can't play any games, right? Well, for the most part this is true. The vast majority of games will not run. Even games most people consider lightweight like TF2 and Counter-Strike Source are completely unplayable, so we're mostly limited to FOSS games as they're very lightweight. But even with FOSS games there are limits. Super Tux Car is completely unplayable and so is Open Arena. Though Super Tux runs really well, so does T-Worlds, so does this game, and so does Freedom. A game I didn't even know about before making this video. You should play it though, it's really good. So conclusion, should you buy an old netbook like this? No, 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 no. The hardware is insanely underpowered and you can buy cheap sandy bridge systems that will absolutely destroy this netbook. But at the same time, it's interesting to see what you can do with a machine like this. Not to mention the other things you can do, like using it for network storage, setting it up as a Tor relay, or even using it for Home Assistant. I'll be sure to make a future video about this netbook, but for now, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, cheerio.